Hello everyone, welcome to another procedural material tutorial. So in this one, we're gonna be creating this procedural brushed metal in Blender. If you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and all of my patrons over on my Patreon page also get access to my procedural materials. And another great way to help support the channel is by purchasing my Blender procedural material packs. So I create packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. So if you'd like to check out the procedural material packs, I'll have the links in the description where you can purchase on my Gumroad store. Or if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then I also have a Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. The links are in the description. All right, so let me just show you real quick what I have in the 3D space. So I just pressed Shift A and I went right down here and added an icosphere. And then right behind me, if you click on the add icosphere settings, I just turned the subdivisions up to like a six so it's pretty high detail so we just have a nice smooth sphere to preview our material on and then I just added a camera and pointed it right at the sphere now for the lighting if you click right over here onto the world properties I added in this photo studio Broadway hall and this is a free HDRI from a polyhaven.com so if you'd like to use the same HDRI that I'm using to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections I'll have the link in the video description and so right here in the world you can just add a new world click here on the color on that little yellow dot and you can just change this to environment texture and then you can just open up the HDRI and I downloaded the 1k HDR version of this HDRI and then I will also be using the node wrangler add-on in this tutorial to preview different nodes so to enable the add-on just click on edit and open up the preferences and then over there in the add-ons tab you can just search for the node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video all right so just select the object whatever object you want to add the material onto and I'm going to click on new to add a new material in the shader editor so to start off I'm going to press shift a and let's go to the search here and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's just drop the noise texture right down here and then I'm also going to hold down the Z button go up into the rendered view so I can preview how that's looking all right now to preview this node you can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes so just control shift and then select different nodes and that is using the feature from the node wrangler add-on and it's going to preview different nodes using the viewer now I want to add a texture coordinate and mapping nodes to the noise texture so just make sure you have the noise texture selected and then you can press Control T and Control T is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping again that's another feature from the node wrangler now I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates are going to place the texture more evenly on the object so I'm going to use the object coordinates they work really well for procedural materials and then let's go back over to this noise texture and I want to play with some of the settings so on the detail here I want to turn this all the way up to the max which is 15 so it has more detail and then I'm gonna turn the roughness value up to just like a 0.6 so it has a little bit more roughness and a little bit more detail in there now you can see this isn't really looking like brushed metal so that is where the mapping node comes in so depending on your object you can change one of these scale values so you can change the X scale or the Y scale or the Z scale and you can see that that is going to actually squish or stretch the texture so I am going to scale it on the X value so on this mapping node on the X I'm going to scale this to like a value of 40 and now you can see we have that brushed metal look so there's all these little lines kind of going up and down on the brushed metal now to add just a little bit more variation to the brushed metal texture I'm going to turn the distortion value up so on the distortion value here on the noise texture I'm going to turn this up to like a three and you can see it's going to add quite a bit more detail and also just add a little bit of variation kind of a little bit of a wobble there in the noise texture all right so now let's take the factor and we're going to plug the factor into the base color on the principled and then I can just control shift and then select the principled BSDF now this doesn't look anything like metal um, so let's turn this metallic value all the way up to one and that way it's going to be treated as a metallic material so just turn that metallic all the way up to one and then for now we can also like turn the roughness down to make it a little bit more shiny now I want to change the colors of the noise texture before it goes into the base color so to do this I'm gonna press
press shift a let's go to the search here and i'm just going to search for a color ramp so let's click on the color ramp and i'm just going to drop it right here and then i want to make the colors a little bit more contrasty so i'm going to start to drag these together just to make them a bit more contrasty but then i don't want them to be white and black i want them to be a little bit more of gray colors so i'm going to click on the black tab and i'm going to make it a bit of a lighter gray and if you'd like to use the same exact color that i'm using on this darker color you can click right over here on the hex and then in the hex value you can type in seven 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 so seven six times that is the color that i'll be using and then also let's click right here on this white tab and i'm going to make this white tab a little bit darker just that it's a little bit more of a gray metal and again if you'd like to use the exact same color that i'm using then you can click over on the hex so just click on this color click on the hex value and i'm going to be using a hex value of b six times so b b b b b b so those are the colors that i'll be using all right now right now we are just using this one roughness value but i want to add a little bit of variation in the roughness so i'm going to add a texture and then put that into the roughness so what i'm going to do is press shift a and i'm just going to search for another noise texture so let's click on the noise texture and drop it down here now i do want to use the object coordinates on this noise texture but i don't want to plug it through the mapping because the mapping node is going to stretch the texture so i'm just going to take the object right here from the texture coordinate and i will plug that into the vector of the noise texture and then i can just control shift and select the noise texture and that way we can preview what the noise texture looks like all right now again i want to make the detail pretty high so i'm going to turn the detail all the way to the max which is 15 and i'm just going to leave the scale at a value of 5 and then the roughness right here i will just turn that up to like a 0.6 so it has a little bit more roughness all right so we can now take the factor from this bottom noise texture and i'm going to put it into the roughness value and then i can control shift and select the principled bsdf to preview it now i want a little bit more control over this because it is actually kind of rough so i'm going to click on this color ramp and i'm going to press shift d to duplicate it and let's just put it right in here so between this noise texture and the principle and this is going to go into the roughness so now i can drag around these sliders and that is going to change how rough it is so i'm actually going to switch these values so i'm going to bring the lighter color over here kind of to about here and then i can bring the darker value over a bit as well and now if you zoom in there you can see there's a little bit of variation so some parts are a little bit more shiny and then other parts are a little bit more rough all right so that is looking pretty cool but i do just want to add a little bit of bump so what i'm going to do is actually take this color right here the one which is going into the roughness and i'm going to put the color into the normal to give it just a little bit of bump now we need to convert this to normal data you can see there's some weird shading issues that is because this is color data but we need to convert it to normal data this is color data it is a yellow dot but this is normal data this is a purple dot so to convert this to normal data i'm going to press shift a and let's go to the search here and i'm going to search for a bump so let's take this bump node and we're going to stick it right in here between the color ramp and the normal and then i want the color to be going into the height value of the bump so now it's converting it to normal data, but you can see that is super, super strong. So it's really rough. So I want to make this much less strong. So I'm going to turn this way down to a 0 0.01 on the strength value, just a 0 0.01. So now if you kind of zoom in here, you can see there's just a little bit of bump. And if I control shift and select the bump, you can definitely see it kind of right up here. You can definitely see there's a little bit of bump there, but it is very subtle. Of course, if you want to make it more bumpy, if I just control shift and select the principal BSDF, you could totally turn the strength up a little bit maybe just like a 0.1 or a 0.2 but i kind of want it to be a smooth brushed metal so i'm going to turn the strength down to a 0.01 so it's very very smooth and then if you want to change the brightness of the metal a really easy way to do this is just by pressing shift a going to the search here you can just search for a hue saturation node so i'm just going to add the hue saturation value and you can put it right in here right before it goes into the base color and when you change the value that is going to change the brightness of that color so if you want to make it a darker metal you could just turn this down or if you want to make it a lighter metal kind of a white metal you could turn this up and that is it so that is the finished procedural brushed metal so i'll just give this a final render now so i hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you for watching and again if you'd like to purchase this procedural material then you can purchase it over on my gumroad store and you'll also get access to my procedural materials on my patreon page and you can also check out my blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials and if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural materials then you can check out my 
my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and thank you for watching.